Hi everybody, welcome to another video. We have Ann Egger with us today. Hello. Another person that I teach with here in Discovery Hall. Let's flip you around and we'll uh, enjoy visiting with Ann here. Thank you for joining us. All right, well, thank you for your time today. Absolutely. Uh, slammed with emails and other things this morning. As usual, yes. <laughs> And uh, it's not just because you're a geologist, but uh, you're a department chair. That is correct. How long have you been doing that? This is uh, nearing the end of my first year. <laughs> not that we're counting the days. Not or anything. that we're counting. And I should say, too, I am a co chair. Okay. Uh, you've been here a solid decade, maybe more, huh? This is number 11. 11. Yeah. Holy cow. Okay. Where did you come from, and what uh, attracted you to Ellensburg? Uh, let's see. So before I was here, I was down in the, the Bay Area. I was working at Stanford where I did my PhD. Okay. Um, and let's see. I, I, so I also have a joint appointment here in geology and in science education. Okay. And that's one of the things that really attracted me here was being able to span that, those disciplines. Um, and be working both in geological sciences and in science and math education. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the science ed thing, I mean, very few of us in geology have training in that. Uh, how did you find yourself splitting those two worlds, geology and mm -hmm. science ed? Um, Does that go all the way back to Stanford even, even earlier than that? Even earlier than that. Okay. So uh, what got me interested in teaching was and geology actually uh -huh. was yeah. being a river guide so okay. i worked as a river guide for a lot of years on the colorado plateau uh -huh. san juan river and really uh realized that you know when people are out there they got lots of time and they're sitting on the boat staring up at these cliffs exactly. and beautiful landscapes they they get curious and start asking questions and are really ready to learn yep. um, and excited about learning so yeah. Same with me. I was kind of maybe more interested in biology before that, but that really shifted my interest to geology and to, and to teaching. So as soon as I went back to graduate school, I was also involved in like um, designing our TA development and things yeah. that we were doing to get, I wanted to get more teaching experience and that was just part of my whole life. Um, throughout all of my graduate work and beyond. Well, you could have stayed at Stanford. I mean, come on now, that's, that's quite a place. And, uh, <laughs> and we're lucky to have you up here. Have you, in your 11 years uh, here, been truly involved in both departments then, science ed and mm. geology? Yes, I, I, I hope you feel I've been involved in geology. I'm trying to help our view. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you know, I, how how are those worlds different? Like, can you yeah. help our viewers get a sense of? I mean, yeah. I mean, it seems like I'm doing science ed, but not technically. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so what, what's that world like that different than our world in geology? Absolutely, and um, I, it was a, actually a fairly steep learning curve for me coming here, which is. I was involved in what I thought of as geoscience education, and yeah. I still do. Yeah, but. Science Ed, a big part of that program here is, is a teacher preparation program, which mm. is a specific form <laughs> of science education. Yes. Um, it involves certification of teachers and there are some, you know, all kinds of requirements and um, standards and those kinds of things. So that um, department and program has a lot of, there's a lot going on and a lot of people like me who have these joint appointments in yes. a discipline and science ed, but then also people who are just in science and math ed that are, that that is their expertise and in teacher preparation specifically. Well, I keep saying this is the geology building and I guess that's true, like that's where we're headed. We're gonna walk into Discovery Hall like I have with some of the other folks I've been making. Good Lord, what got <laughs> sort of. I think this is part of our science ed group actually. Is it really? Yeah, I think these, it might be from Walloop, maybe? Hi. Okay. 
Yeah, they look young, and I don't <laughs> think these do. are freshmen. Maybe <laughs> they are. I don't, I don't think know. so. <laughs> so anyway, yes, it's it's Discovery Hall, and it's the home of the geo geoscience department and physics. But uh, maybe we can go up to the third floor and get a sense of of uh, yeah. the science ed world as well. For sure. What's the official title of the department? Yeah, it. I keep stumbling because it just changed. Oh, did it? it is, well, well, a year ago, it's science and mathematics education. Science and mathematics education. SMED. Oh, God, really? <laughs> okay, all right, well, we got to change our banner. I got to talk to Addison about changing our banner. It's no longer well, no, Teach no, no. STEM. Teach STEM is correct. Oh, so Teach work? STEM okay. is the um, degree program. Okay. That's the teacher preparation program, okay. but the department. Got it is SMED, so that's not even on there, so okay. we don't have to worry about it. All right. All right. So this is still legit. Okay, very good. Thank you for the door. And uh, I mean, you're the department chair in geology, so we know that's a big part of your life. Um, but you find yourself teaching, or uh, you find yourself teaching some of these teacher prep classes as well. Yes. Is there overlap between our geology folks and the STEM courses? Like, do some of our geology people want to teach? Yes, yeah. So um, one of the courses that I designed and that I have been teaching for a while is, um, it's listed in the science ed department, yeah. but it is an intro earth science course specifically designed for future teachers. So mm. earth science inquiry. Mm -hmm. And I've been teaching that for several years. Next year, Hannah is going to teach it. Oh, good. Um, because it is a, it's a science content course, it's about the earth, um, but it's really designed in a way to model the techniques and strategies mm -hmm. and approaches that we want these future teachers to be using in their classroom when they get there. Are we teaching geology K through 12 in Washington? Hmm. Uh, is it less than it used to be? Is it more than it used to be? Like, it's one thing to train the teachers. It's another to go, look, we have a shortage. We need to teach all this geology. Is that really a thing? Well, so that's a good question. Um, and you know, one of the things in designing this course mm -hmm. in particular is I, I went from the Next Generation Science Standards, which Washington has adopted, and um, design the course around those, not taking a typical intro geology yeah. one-on-one class and, and shifting it. Yeah. And in doing that, um, what I came up with, it's, it's quite a bit different from a geology one-on-one. Okay. It is earth science for sure. Mm -hmm. like, but there's, there's a whole lot more, um, uh, hello? I so. Yeah, <laughs> I know, <laughs> fancy. A um, whole lot more climate, um, hazards and a, lo a lot less uh, rocks, mm. rocks and minerals. Okay. Not, they're not absent, right. but it's not the focus. Yeah. And it's really um, a, hu a, m a really substantial part is how humans interact with the earth and how the earth impacts humans. So um, it, that is, those are part of the state standards um, at all grade bands um, in Washington. Uh, the extent to which those have been implemented, not totally clear right, right now, uh, but that is the expectation. There are, you're right, that there are not a lot of geology classes and the way lots of places are implementing the next generation science standards is through integrated science courses. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the ideal way to do it, mm -hmm. um, but it means one of the things that I care a lot about and I'm really interested in is uh, working with current teachers and helping them develop the knowledge and skills because a lot of the, the teachers that are, would be teaching this earth science content are, are from the life sciences. So that's the reality. Of that's it. the reality. So yeah. they, they need more substance in yes. earth science. Yeah. And so that, you know, that's some of what we do too is um, professional development for those teachers. We also have an, a pretty new master's program in STEM teaching. STEM teacher leadership, um, yeah. <laughs> something like that, uh, that where um, practicing teachers can come back and improve their content and skills. 
Well, before we go into this room, looks like there's some action in there. It looks um, like there is. You're a perfect person to ask this question because you've been in a leadership position nationwide. Is there a state or two that's ahead of the game mm. as far as earth science teaching, and regardless if there's wonderful earth science mm -hmm. examples in the state? New York. State of New York. State of New York has uh, had the Regents exam in earth science and a Regents level, which is kind of like AP advanced placement, uh -huh. but they're, they're Regents science and uh, they've, that's existed for over 100 years. They train they have a really strong teacher development program. Huh. So New York State is um, is a big one. Large population too, so that helps. But right. in, in terms of earth science in the K-12 content and preparing teachers to teach it, um, hmm. yeah, okay. that, that's a big one. Um, uh, what about West? Like with, yeah, with all I know, this geology I know. in your face, so, it just feels like a... Utah is another state okay. that has um, yeah. deeply integrated uh, earth science standards. Okay. Uh, you know, surprisingly, shockingly, California is way behind. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, right. And I say that a little bit flippantly, but, n but not yeah. completely. They, um, huh. And the reason that they're way behind is that earth science is not accepted as a laboratory science for acceptance to the UC system. Mm. So biology, chemistry, physics are considered lab sciences, oh, and see. you have to have two or three, I can't remember, to, to be accepted into a University of California huh. school. Huh. And earth science is not considered one of those. So there's been a lot of work over the past decade to, to make that change, and it's it's a super slow oh, I'm sure. process. I'm sure. I mean, but that, yeah. that's what it's driven by. Yeah, There. it makes sense. I'm just distracted suddenly. Yeah, I know. I, I, um, I think these are, uh, I think this is not unrelated to STEM Teach program. It's like the whole thing was orchestrated. Yes. Instead of me knocking <laughs> on your door 10 minutes ago and saying, hey, how hey. about a video today? <laughs> Guys, thank you for being up for it. Okay, sure. so you've I avoid this corner of the building. I don't know what's going on. Okay. So can you help us just I can. Some basics here? Oh, yeah, got, this oh is, wow. Oh Lord. Okay. Yeah. Um so CW um three two or three years ago, three years ago, um we got a a big grant, two million dollar grant from the Washington State Opportunity Scholars okay. to um develop this teach STEM program. And it is um, uh, kind of part of a franchise. That's the UTeach system out of UT, University okay. of Texas, Austin. Oh. And it started just in Texas, and then it has expanded now to, to several dozen other schools. Okay. We were the first ones to um, have to switch their curriculum to a quarter system from semesters, and also the first ones to integrate middle level science and math I see. teaching. I see. Oh, yeah. Because okay. it was all focused on, you teach, originally it was focused on secondary math and science teaching, mm. and we added the middle level. Mm. So now, um, that all of that grant money was used to support the development of this program, which involved um, very strong and deep collaboration between the School of Education and faculty in Cecil curriculum, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> there, there's all kinds of programs over there, but, but uh, faculty in School of Education, faculty in College of the Sciences, uh, co-developing yeah, these curricula yeah. and classes and co-teaching a lot of them. So now that program is up and running. We have all those graduate. well, this is just this year's graduates. Mm. Um, and those these folks are now teaching mostly across the state. Some of them do go elsewhere, but they're mostly getting their Washington teaching credentials and, and teaching across the state. So um, it's really been a successful program. Hi. Hello. It looks that's like they're going to be coming noisy. out the door. Oh, that's good. We oh, like they, noise. Oh, oh, so, you, so where are these students from? They are from Franklin Middle School. They're from Yakima. Franklin okay. Middle School in Yakima. Awesome. Okay, hi, you guys. What? You see it. Thank you. 
You want to go in? Yeah, if, Take yeah. a quick break. Sure. So this, this room is part of that grant, actually, which is that th the program really needs to have a place where students can work, can be working collaboratively, can come anytime. The offices along the wall are the faculty that are mm. advisors. Um, we have master teachers. One of our master teachers is right here. There's Linda and Adrian. How are you guys? Very involved in this program. Yes, we, are, we get to mess around with, with our beautiful energy sticks today. <laughs> and the kids are having fun. Awesome. Learning about completing a circuit. <laughs> hey. Super cool. Thank you. So uh, it's this is a rare moment when it's empty like this. Yeah. There's usually yeah. lots of lots of energy and students in here. And so, how involved are you day to day or di different times of the academic year in this space or working with this faculty here? Yeah. So me personally. Me personally, right now, um, not so much because okay. there's the chair stuff and other things. But at, at other times, other years, I do teach more in the program. Um, one of the fun things that uh, we've done is have a little speed dating activity in the intro courses where oh all of the faculty and staff in the program come in and meet all of the new students and they get to ask us questions and find out more about what we do. So. I'm trying to stay involved even though I'm not teaching so much in the program yeah. right now. Yeah, well you got your hands full with other things, that's for sure. Oh, look at this. Oh yeah, we've got some 3D printers and scanners, so there's a lot of the projects that students are doing are um, building things, involve engineering, and um, they huh. get to, yeah, I guess. That's, this is a 3D printer? That shows you how much I know, good lord. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to do anything, but holy cow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this whole, I know the building is, is six years old or five years old or whatever, but like this program didn't exist like a decade ago? Like, Correct. Like when you arrived, this, this just- That's right. This is, so you had a hand in creating this? Yes, yeah. And write, wrote some of the grants and that sort of thing. Um, I, Jenny DeShane was the main author of the grants and you know, did a, absolutely amazing job leading this. Yeah. Um, she's in biology and science ed. Mm -hmm. uh, I helped and, you know, have been um, certainly supportive of it. This has been a really cool, uh, amazing program um, and mm -hmm. it's grown a lot um, and I think we've really done a nice job. Hmm. Well, if somebody wants to come to Central I don't know what, like what, what's, what's the, maybe we should. Yeah, we should uh, probably maybe. wander out. Um, so somebody comes to Central and they hear this is a good place to learn how to become a teacher. Okay, sure is, fine. yes. Um, but this is not the School of Education. This is a special like science-based thing. So That's right. So are all, the, are all these students who are going through this program uh, majoring in a certain science discipline and then adding some of this teaching stuff on top of it? Yes, so if they are, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> if they are, there, there are a couple of different paths okay. and the middle level science or middle level math teaching is a program, standalone program, because then you're getting sort of um, a broader uh, content base generally in several of the disciplines. Okay. Um, and they're doing that middle level science or math major plus the Teach STEM program, which is the, the certification mm -hmm. arm. You could mm -hmm. major in middle level science and not actually get certified, mm. which would be weird, but it's huh. possible. Yeah. Um, if you, <laughs> sorry people. I forgot people. to say your mic is <laughs> going to self-destruct in five seconds. Okay. <laughs> Uh, if you want to teach at the high school level, yeah. then you have to have a major in a content area. I so see. then you would major, we have students who major in geology, either the BS or the BA. Yeah. And then they also, ha they have a second major in the STEM teach program. Mm -hmm. And that again is what gets them certified. Mm -hmm. 
This is great. How about one more thing? Unless you had something else you wanted to show specifically, like you've been involved in teaching Geology 210, which is, yes. which is yes, that I have. course for, for many years. Yes. Uh, we taught together for your first two years that you were here yes. down in Owens Valley. Are you continuing with Geology 210? And yes. what role does that serve for the program and potentially for the, the STEM teaching thing yeah. that we were just yep. talking about? Absolutely. So um, I love teaching 210. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we get to spend two weeks in one of my favorite places in the world. Yeah. Definitely my favorite place to teach geology. Uh -huh. um, I mean, Central Washington is nice, but the fact that I get to take our students down there yeah. to California is pretty yeah. awesome. Uh, so, you know, it's the only, or it's a course that's required for all of the majors in our, in our department. So no matter which path you take after that, um, you have to take 210. What's the official title of the class? Introduction to Field Methods. Yep, okay. And I, I don't think I said this. We, so we spent two weeks down in the Owens Valley area, mm -hmm. Bishop, California, mm -hmm. um, hanging out at the White Mountain Research Station. And, you know, it's like a place where all the, there's no vegetation covering up all the rocks. Yeah. So students get to, um, apply what they have learned about in a more theoretical sense in the classroom, yes. really get to um, try that out in the field. And we have a really nice setup now. I think we're, we're doing a good job of scaffolding them building their skills um, in the field, taking field notes, mm -hmm. getting them used to just being outside for all day, <laughs> yeah. um, all those things. Um, so it builds a strong sense of community amongst the students. Um, I've already got, I think, 18 people signed up right now, and that's before transfer students. Nice. So I think we're going to have a very full class this year. This year you're heading down in, in late August? Mm hmm Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll leave here August 26th. Excellent, yeah. Anyone want to be a cook? We need a cook. <laughs> Contact me if you have oh, some experience. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and then, uh, you know, because it's required for all of, all of our majors, if someone were going into secondary uh, earth science teaching, they yes. would take this course. Okay. But because all it requires is an intro course as a prerequisite, mm -hmm. um, I also really encourage the middle level students, anyone who wants to be, um, who wants to teach science, <laughs> yes. and who's taken our intro course to yes. take it because it's a great next level like here's what you do with students in the field here's how to take really good field notes here's how to make observations in the field anyone can make observations in the field mm -hmm. here's how to be a little more systematic about mm -hmm. it and help your students be more systematic about it so um, you know I think they really for so many students it's this really fundamental experience where yeah. they get to, they, they really become awakened to that environment. Well, I, not to put too fine a point on it, but this Geology 210 has become a crucial course in our program for many reasons, including brand new transfer students. Yes. It's yes. their first experience when they arrive here. So if somebody's watching this right now and they are thinking about coming here, not only because of the geology interest, but maybe a potential teaching interest. Yes. You'd be your first Come person. Come talk to me. Yes. yes. So email and I'll put emails, uh, Anne's yep. email in the link below. And um, um, and that social connection is there too. It's yeah. their first experience yep. with a whole Nothing new Nothing like two days in the van together to really, <laughs> you know, cement some bonds. Right, right. <laughs> Very good. Well, let me walk you back to your office. All right. Talk, and, uh, From the yellow say room. say goodbye to Bruh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for being up for this. Sure. Uh, it's been uh, fun to show off the building. I don't know if you've noticed anybody loitering. I I've noticed more and more folks just off the street who are coming to like check out. Here's Walter. I, and I sure have. And they also email me. Oh. Chair at geology.cw.edu. I get lots of emails from you guys <laughs> asking about coming to visit. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep the light on for you. Door's always open. I guess. I don't know. It's not, <laughs> but it's open during the week. During, during, during business hours, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Anne, for your time. Thank you. Okay.